This is the Draeger Oxylog 3000 ventilator. It's specifically designed for emergency department and transport team use. It's recently been superseded by the closely similar Oxylog 3000 Plus, but for the time being the 3000 is more common. Now this tutorial is about Oxylog basics, the parts of the machine, connecting it and setting basic ventilation parameters. By the end of the tutorial, you should know how to use an Oxylog to keep a paralyzed patient alive. First, let's talk about the anatomy of the Oxylog. The 3000 weighs 5.4 kilos and costs about $25,000. So try not to drop it on your foot or leave it in a taxi. The machine is electronically controlled but gas driven. This means it has to have both electricity and pressurized oxygen to work. The electricity supply either comes from an internal lithium ion battery or from a DC transformer. In normal operation, the battery life is about four hours. The front panel of the ventilator consists of a screen, keys, parameter controls, and a rotary knob. The right side of the ventilator has connections for DC power, the oxygen supply, ventilator hose, and flow sensor hoses. It also has a slot for the battery. The left side has slits for air intake when using combined oxygen air mixtures. So now we know the difference between front and back, let's connect it up. Before turning on, connect the DC supply, if it's available, and the oxygen, ventilator and sensor hoses. The oxygen hose should only go on finger tight, you don't need a spanner. The sensor hoses are colour coded clear and blue to match the connections on the side of the ventilator. It's good practice to attach the ventilator to a test lung before connection to a patient. The test lung consists of a plastic elbow connector, a metal catheter connector, and a breathing bag. The test lung is needed for a complete device check, which should be done every day. Now that we've connected up, let's talk knobology. To turn on, press the power key. The ventilator takes itself through a five second self check. If you press the rotary knob now, you'll be taken through a complete device check, which takes about three minutes. We're not going to do that here. But if you leave things alone, the ventilator will default into SIMV mode with a PEEP of 5 and start ventilating. We'll get back to ventilation modes and parameters in a few minutes, but first let's talk about the screen. The screen is divided into five windows, alarms, measured values, curves, settings, and information. The alarm window is right at the top. When an alarm goes off, a written message is displayed accompanied by a flashing light and an alarm tone. High priority alarms are accompanied by a red lamp and a distinctive jingle. The alarm can be suppressed for two minutes by pressing the alarm silence key, but it will just come back on again if the underlying fault hasn't been remedied. Even when the fault has been fixed, the alarm message will remain in the alarm window until the alarm reset key is pressed. The measured values window contains parameters such as minute volume and respiratory rate. There are five pages of measured values, and these can be flipped through by pressing the values key. The curves window shows pressure and flow curves on long and short axes. These curves are particularly useful in calibrating the ventilation of complex cases, like asthma and COPD. They can be flipped through by pressing the Curves key. Next to the Settings window. This either shows supplementary ventilation parameters like PEEP and inspiratory time, or it shows alarm limits. 
Again, the pages can be flipped through by pressing the settings and alarm keys respectively. Settings and alarm limits can be set by using the rotary knob, but we'll have a look at how to do that later. Finally, the information window is at the bottom of the screen. By default, this contains information on oxygen consumption and battery supply. However, when parameters are changed using the rotary controls, the information window displays their numerical value, as well as the value of derived parameters like IE ratio. It reverts to oxygen consumption and battery power a few seconds after ventilation parameters have been changed. Right, so now we know which way up the machine goes, how to hook it up, and how to twiddle knobs like a pro. Let's finish off with ventilation modes. The 3000 has two volume controlled modes and two pressure controlled modes. CMV and SIMV are volume controlled modes, delivering pre-specified tidal volumes at pre-specified rates. The difference between them is that SIMV allows the patient to breathe up, supporting these extra breaths with pressure support. CPAP and PCV are pressure controlled modes. CPAP does not have a mandatory rate and can only be used on a spontaneously breathing patient. PCV does have a mandatory rate and can be used on both paralyzed and spontaneously breathing patients. Both CPAP and PCV can be used for non-invasive ventilation, provided that the NIV setting is on. When they're used with pressure support, they're effectively the same as BiPAP. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to confine ourselves to SIMV, which is the default mode and the most commonly used mode. So, adjust tidal volume, rate, pressure limit, and FiO2 with the rotary parameter controls. As you adjust these controls, you'll see the numerical values displayed in the information window. Now check the measured values, and in particular the expired tidal volume, in the measured values window. Expired tidal volume often differs from the set value, for instance if there's a cuff leak, or if the pressure limit has been reached. Now make sure that the pressure limit is both safe and well clear of the peak of the pressure curve. If the pressure limit is set too low, the tidal volume won't be delivered and the machine will alarm. Next, adjust supplementary values like PEEP and Inspiratory Time by going through the Settings menu. Go through the Settings pages by pressing the Settings key and then highlight and select the parameter that you want by turning and pressing the rotary knob. When the parameter is selected, it's displayed in inverted type. Change its value by turning the rotary knob and then press again to confirm. Finally, once you're happy with the settings, set the alarm limits. Now a quick way of doing this is by setting auto alarm limits. This automatically sets alarm thresholds around current settings. Very cool. So we've successfully connected the Oxylog, turned it on, set it up and saved another life. There's a box of chocolates waiting for you in the tea room. But before we go, let's point out a couple of keys that are often forgotten about, mainly because most people don't know how useful they can be. The 100% O2 key delivers a three minute burst of pure oxygen, which may be useful before maneuvers like a tube change or suctioning. The inspiratory hold key holds the patient in inspiration, which is great for chest x-rays. Just make sure that your ghoulies are well covered in lead. Finally, let's turn the ventilator off. You may be asked to do this if the resus bay requires hoovering and the cleaners run out of power sockets. Just remember to check with the patient first. Press the power key and then confirm with the press of the rotary knob. Great, you've done it with panache and now you know Oxylog 3000 Basics. Sometimes.